Hi, this is Randy Kirk. And once again, I'm going to do this uh, um, raw, as they say. I'm not going to have uh, my team do the any editing. Um, in the future, I think we'll get back to editing again. But this is another huge subject that is just breaking. It's been breaking all week, and I really feel that it's important to get this information to you as quickly as possible. I want to talk to you about the, the entire semi-truck situation. Uh, there's been some excellent videos done, including an interview that I did with uh, Brian Wong the other day of uh, the Next Big Future uh, channel. Uh, is a great, uh, a great interview, and if you want to get into the weeds, um, you want to see this interview, I'll put a link uh, to his uh, channel below. And uh, you might also want to uh, follow him on Twitter, as well as to uh, uh, subscribe to his channel, because he is a scientist. I'm not. <laughs> and unless you consider a degree in psychology to be a, psych to be a scientist, uh, I am not a scientist. He is. And so he can get really down deep into the details. Um, and there's been a couple of other good videos this last week that do get into those kind of details. I'm going to take this opportunity, though, to kind of give you the, the, the top line and the bottom line in terms of finances, but the top line, kind of a, a really clear look at what the Tesla semi-truck future looks like and how massive this future is. Without going crazy, without making wild predictions, I think you'll see by the end of the time that you listen to this video that this is huge. And the comparison I make in the headline is one Tesla semi truck is equal to more than $30,000, $40,000 vehicles. So we're not talking about a small issue here, but you'll see how this 30 times actually uh, comes into being. All right, let's start from a basic premise. The basic premise that is that every government and every company that uses semi-trucks, whether they own the semi-trucks or whether they are uh, uh, in the business of providing semi-truck transportation to other companies, everybody that owns or uses semi-trucks will want to switch to electric trucks. Um, this is true for social reasons. They want to be able to do the PR. They want to be able to show that they're doing the socially correct thing. And they also may have great conviction about reducing pollution, reducing CO2, and reducing uh, brake dust, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So, so for all the right reasons and for real benefits to their company, they would like to be able to switch to electric anyway. But the question has always been, is there an electric truck out there that can do the job? And then is there an electric truck out there that is affordable? Well, if you now take what we found out last week is absolutely true, is that electric trucks are less expensive by a lot to operate. We're talking on the order of $60,000, $80,000 a year less expensive to operate than a diesel truck. Uh, then, you know, it becomes a no-brainer. Um, if the diesel truck and the electric truck cost about the same, it's really a no-brainer. But even if the electric truck costs a significant amount more, it still becomes an obvious decision. Now, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to suggest that the $250,000 roughly that has been talked about that Tesla might charge for their 500-mile range truck is probably low. Um, I'm going to guess that it's going to be at least in the 300,000s and possibly even approaching 400,000 for their top of the line truck. So right away, you know that there's 10 times, that's 10 times the possible income, the possible revenue that you'd receive from selling a $40,000 car. That math is pretty easy. So uh, let's say that it's 350, $400,000 for the truck itself. The company's gonna save a tremendous amount of money by utilizing it. It's going to be safer. It's going to be better for the environment. Um, it's it has it's it's just, and it's quieter. Um, it's better for the uh, for the operator for the for the individual who's driving the truck. I mean, there's so many benefits to this truck that it makes it again an easy decision. So what does that mean? That means that Tesla's order book is filled up and it's going to be filled up forever, especially because there's literally no competition. Without going into tons of detail, which some of these other videos do. Uh, the competition right now is half the range, 
not nearly the capabilities, not nearly the look, not nearly, I mean, it's just on so many levels, the competition isn't even close. And basically there's only a few folks that are in the semi-truck business who could provide much competition uh, going forward. So for now, we're just going to make an assumption that the 10 to 30,000 semis that, that Tesla will make next year, uh, they will sell those without even without any trouble at all. The 50,000 that they're projecting for 2024 should be extremely easy, given that there's about 200,000 semi trucks, brand new semi trucks sold every year just in the United States. So who's going to want to replace their diesel with another diesel starting tomorrow if you can get an electric truck that does what the Tesla truck does? A lot of companies are not going to have a choice because their old truck is is done and they need to they need to get rid of it. But Tesla is only going to be able to make twenty or thirty thousand. We're not sure exactly how many next year, and they're predicting fifty thousand the following year. They can't handle the entire market, and nobody else can either. So the order book is full for years and years and years into in, into the future. So there's there's an assumption. How fast can Tesla ramp up and make 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000? They could probably ramp up as fast as they'd like to, but I'm going to suggest that their bandwidth, their corporate bandwidth, uh, there's a limitation, a limitation to how many engineers, a limitation to how many people to build buildings, a limitation on how many people to design buildings, to design lines, uh, a limitation on how many people can just be involved in marketing and helping to get the new product to market because they've got all these other things going on. So how do you uh, come out with a cyber truck and come up with a robot and all these things all at once? It's as a, as an ex manufacturer on a much smaller level, um, we were always confounded by the fact that we had all these new products that were all huge winners and you just can't handle them all simultaneously. Okay. So no idea. Tesla has made no indication at all, one way or the other, what happens beyond 2024 in terms of whether they're going to ramp to 100,000, 200,000 or whatever. For now, we will just assume that the 50,000 truck level of 2024 will be roughly met and the future is, is unknown. Now, here comes the more interesting part. The interesting part is that every single truck that's manufactured will require some kind of uh, of mega, uh, there you know, there's a a mega pump, okay, if you will. So if you have a supercharger, you'll have a mega charger. You'll need a mega charger to fill up these trucks, um, and that mega charger, uh, for instance, Pepsi just announced the other day that uh, they're putting in one one mega charger at least at each location where they're going to have these trucks. So you got to buy the mega charger. That's there's a dollar amount there. Behind the mega charger, you need to have a mega pack. Now, if you don't know what a mega pack is, that is a huge container-sized battery that is going to provide the battery backup for the for the uh, for the electric grid, because there's no way that most companies have enough power coming into the building to be able to handle these mega chargers. So you could shut down your factory while you're charging up the truck, but that's not a good idea. You need to have this battery power uh, backing it up in order to be able to service these trucks. And you roughly need one of these mega chargers for every five trucks that, that Tesla produces. That mega charger might be at a factory. It might be at a distribution center. It might be at a, a, a Walmart. It might be at a truck stop, but you need about one mega charger for every five trucks, okay? Because the grid can't handle it. In addition to that, you're gonna need solar to back up the mega pack. Once again, these mega packs and these trucks consume a tremendous amount of energy. So you're not gonna wanna, the city, the community, the, the utility is not gonna want you sucking up that much energy out of their existing supply lines. So you're going to want to, let's say it's a factory, let's say it's a Walmart, let's say it's a distribution center, you're going to want to cover the entire roof of that facility with solar in order to produce the energy that's going to go into the mega pack. 
you're, you may have to go off of the roof and go into the parking lot, which is great anyway. So the corporation, the company, the, the Walmart or the, or the distribution center, these people are going to benefit from the fact that they're installing the solar and installing the mega packs because that's just more good PR. That's just more good for the environment. They're going to be able to manage all of that system, the solar, the battery, the charger, and the truck. All of those will be in a Tesla management system, which will allow them to maximize the utilization of the grid versus the solar on a, on a minute by minute basis to keep the cost as low as possible to the factory for not only the trucks, but also for other uses in the factory or in the, in the grocery store, in the store. So this is a huge win, win, win. It's a win for the environment. It's a win for the companies. It's a win for the truckers. It's a win for the consumer because the costs are going to go down on transportation. Every single person wins in this entire situation. But you as a possible stockholder, you as somebody who watches Tesla, you who are an environmentalist and are interested in, the, in, the, in, in reducing the amount of CO2, the amount of soot, and the amount of brake dust that's in the air, this is a huge win for all of those. And here's how it works for the for Tesla. So one mega charger for every five vehicles means that there's actually slightly more revenue for the mega charger in terms of the sale to the to the truck owner, slightly more revenue for that than there is for the for the trucks themselves. And then in addition to that, you've got the solar revenue. If you add it all together, all everything, the entire package, you're looking at revenue of somewhere around 30 or more times the revenue that would be generated from a single $40,000 vehicle. So is this a good deal for Tesla? Is this a good deal for the world? Is a good deal for everybody? Um, oh, by the way, I promised you and promised you about the brake dust. Okay, so a Tesla truck does not use the brakes hardly ever because it's regenerate the, the, the braking of the truck is done by the motors, just like it is on a regular uh, Tesla electric car or other electric cars. When you want to slow down, the motors slow you down, not the brakes. So you very rarely will use your brakes on a uh, any kind of a Tesla semi-truck or other kinds of electric semi-trucks. And this means there'll be dramatically less brake dust that's being uh, uh, generated, and and, uh, and which is a, a, a very bad pollutant, by the way. Okay, so just one more, just one more win. So let me double check and make sure I've told you all about the uh, the whole thing here. Um, oh, by the way, this is not just a U.S. issue. Um, China, I mean, well, basically every place in the world, large yeah. trucks are used. Sometimes they are semi trucks, similar to the United States. Uh, in China, they're called uh, large trucks. Uh, in other places, they don't use as many semi-trucks, but they use very large box trucks uh, instead of semi-trucks. So this is a, a worldwide opportunity for Tesla, but for the for the short term, short term, for the next decade, it is very unlikely that they'll ever be able to make enough trucks to meet the demand for the trucking industry um, as they replace uh, diesels. Um, hope this has been interesting. If it has, please like. Uh, please uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more like this and be sure to go out and buy a copy of the Elon Musk mission. Talk to you later. It's been, it's been great having this conversation.